Halloween as being um, the, the first film that sort of fulfilled what I'd liked to do when I was starting out. And I had, um, I had worked on all these drive-in movies and they were you know, a good place to learn, but um, they, they never really sort of fulfilled what I had hoped to do, which is become a visual storyteller. Um, instead of just using the cameras to record, uh, you know, cars blowing up and, and chases and, and girls with machine guns and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Halloween was m more about using the camera to uh, tell the story, to get the audience emotionally involved. John wanted to be a visual storyteller and, you know, and it was certainly his early starting. Uh, I wanted to do the same. Uh, struggled sometimes to try to get directors on on previous films to to do you know storytelling shot dolly shots and things and uh, but John was absolutely all about that. W one of the things that most impressed me about working on Halloween was the fact that um, we had a lot of autonomy. The producers were you know uh, seemingly pretty trusting. I think that uh, Mustafa Khad had seen John's you know, previous film, uh, Salt on Precinct 13. And um, so, uh, as I was told by Deborah and John, um, they had been approached by Mustafa, who said, um, you know, I, I want to make a movie with babysitters being killed on Halloween night. And uh, John and Deborah said, oh, okay, now, so, uh, who are these people? What do they, no, 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 no. Just make me a movie babysitters being killed on Halloween night. See you later. Um, eventually it became uh, the largest grossing uh, indie film, a dollar in for dollar out, you know, because our budget was minuscule um, of almost all time until, you know, recently, um, you know, ticket prices have gone up and so there's more films that make more money. But for for what it was and for you know what we did, it was hugely successful. After Halloween, you know, it was decided that uh, it was perfect for a sequel. So uh, Halloween Two followed the the legacy of uh, Michael Myers and Laurie Strode and, and uh, others, set you know in a in a new environment, but sort of continuing the story. Um, and so when uh, when John and Deborah um, you know, agreed to make the sequel, uh, John and Deborah producing. Uh, part of the, uh, the, the deal was that I would also work on it to keep a consistent look and, and so forth. So um, I did. Uh, Halloween 3, they uh, tried an experiment, which is uh, can they do a film that uh, the connection really is just Halloween itself? not the same characters and you know it was I think disappointing to the audience because they, they said where's Michael Myers um, but uh, you know it, it was a worthy effort I think by by a lot of us. Uh, the success of Halloween certainly validated uh, John's um, you know abilities um, and I like to you know think that you know what I had contributed was noticed also so uh, um, you know, we, I think it was pretty quickly after that, that, uh, you know, they decided to make another movie. It was interesting because it was, in fact, a ghost story more than it was a horror film. So it was, it, it, for us, it was a chance to go a little different direction, but uh, still stay within the, uh, you know, the successful genre that uh, we'd started on. I was very pleased and excited by the prospect of uh, of Escape from New York. It was um, it was a different story. It was still action adventure, but um, the characters were, it was a very heightened reality. We were going to create uh, the feeling of, um, you know, New York, different time, different place, and, um, and, and the whole, you know, environment around the characters, the prisoners, um, Kirk Russell, uh, uh, Snake, 
and uh, and so forth. It, it was going to be a, a really completely creative visual uh, enterprise. The thing, um, well, I think we all had a sense that it was going to be sort of bigger and better. You know, this, the story was had been established. We knew we were going to take do a little different take on it, um, and. And as we got into production, it w was evident that you know we were going to have enhanced production value. You know, now to to see the final version with the music and the mood and the um, the color uh, corrections that we do as part of the process. And all, um, to to me, it was like one of those great moments because you know I I came from low budget films where we were lucky to have a certain level of production quality um, and um, a certain amount of the shots that barely made a scene work. So to look at the thing and to see what we had accomplished with, you know, still with our sort of low budget sensibilities, but, you know, the, the, the added um, facilities and, and uh, things that we were able to have. Um, to, to look at the film and, and realize that you know we had uh, again accomplished something that was more than we had thought. So it was a uh, it was a for me a step into the major studios. <laughs> I got a, a phone call, again, I think it was from my agent, uh, who said that uh, John was doing a, um, a fairly major studio production at, over at Fox, um, and he wanted to know if I was available and interested. And um, I said, yeah, I'd love to do the film. One of the things that, you know, John had uh, wanted to do was to make an American Kung Fu movie. And uh, so he had um, invited some of the uh, Chinese guys who did those in, in Hong Kong over to, uh, you know, talk about and supervise the, uh, the fights. And, and I remember the, uh, looking at sequences that were pretty remarkable. And um, <clears throat> John saying, well, how can we do this? <laughs> the uh, production design on uh, Big Trouble in Little China was done by John Lloyd, who was this uh, really accomplished, um, and to us, an older guy. Um, and uh, very, very talented, and he, he um, to me, he was a great revelation because he would build things like forced perspective hallways, so they looked like they went on forever, but they actually got smaller and smaller physically. Um, all kinds of little tricks like that. So it, it was like working in uh, old Hollywood, um, but for us it was contemporary Hollywood. Now it's old Hollywood again. So I, when I saw the sketches and drawings and so forth, and read read the uh, the script and started to apply, you know, that information to it, um, I said, "Wow, this is going to really be interesting." And um, you know, he had sketches of these great big statues and all kinds of really unusual uh, perspective on on the, on the world of uh, a little China underneath the. Uh, San Francisco streets, apparently. So I got very enthusiastic about, you know, what what was going to happen, and how to uh, how to take a realistic look at the above ground world, and then uh, when they went into the below ground little China, uh, to to sort of enhance that without it being over the top. It still had to be accessible, I think, to an audience as being uh, plausible, a world that could exist. 
Um, but still, you know, it's a lot of gold and red and, and all kinds of shapes and colors. <clears throat> so it provided the opportunity to do some very interesting uh, stuff. And I, uh, again, it's the kind of thing I really enjoy doing. So I, I think it was, uh, I, I enjoyed it very much. It was, it's a, it was a, for us, a zany romp as uh, the film turned out to be. <laughs> Come out no more. What? Huh? What'll come out no more? Kurt's probably one of the worst. Oh, wait, that's going to get out again, isn't it? Somebody's going to put that clip on that thing. That's not true, Kurt. Um, <clears throat> you know, I have to say, wh when, whenever I'm asked about uh, wh which actors I've enjoyed working with, you know, Kurt's always one of the top guys. Um, a true professional, you know, he came from a, um, uh, a, a history, a legacy of being a child actor. Um, so as a result, uh, you know, he, he takes it as a, you know, a craft as much as an art. So there's no, there's no pretensions about him. And, uh, and he, uh, I, I think he really enjoys doing, uh, you know, the kinds of characters he's done on John's films, you know, they're, they're quirky, they're potentially over the top, you know, and he, he uh, really did that on Big Trouble in Little China, Escape also he did, you know, a great, great character, but completely different, you know, dark and brooding compared to, um, to Jack in, um, from uh, Big Trouble in Little China, you know, so to, to me it was always uh, a lot of fun to see what he was going to do, where he was going to go. All right, where's my truck? I'm out of here. You don't want to go back there. Isn't your truck insured? Of course it is. That's not the Then smart man gets it later. Smart man calls a cop. Cops got better things to do than get killed. Oh, yeah? So do I. John was a little dismayed as we were shooting uh, because uh, even though I didn't directly hear it, I, I think the studio was a little confused by the tone of the movie. And, um, you know, it was... You know, in, in retrospect, I have to say that, um, you know, the tone we took was, uh, I think, it makes it stand out more than a lot of contemporary movies that took themselves seriously. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's a case of, uh, you know, the, the studio not quite seeing a film that's a little different than what they had thought and saying, oh, well, yeah, that could be interesting and that'll work. I think the fact that after Big Trouble in Little China, um, John went back to, uh, you know, smaller films because his, his satisfaction was less rewarding, um, you know, his, his experience was less rewarding. And um, I, I um, had opportunities um, that I, I took on um, some larger projects. So, so I think it was um, just a, a case of circumstances that, um, you know, allowed us to pursue our particular interests. You know, as I look back on, on the Carpenter films, um, I don't know if there's any that I can say I, I particularly fonder of. Um, I have, I have a lot of great memories and satisfaction off of all of them. Each one, and I, I think that's partly because, um, you know, John was always making a, a different film, a different version of suspense, perhaps. Um, but um, there was always, uh, you know, different spin on things. You know, you look at Big Trouble in Little China compared to Halloween, you know, complete opposites of, but uh, still, you know, certain sensibilities of, of um, well, using the camera to tell the story, to to uh, get the audience involved with the characters and the emotion of, of a particular sequence or film. So I, I each film had its own uh, merits, its own you know rewards, and, um, and so there's nothing I can look at in any particular film and say I 
I like it better than the others because each one has has had um, its own life and and was rewarding in its own way to me.